week on Geek Crash Course, we're covering Resident Evil. It's a classic horror franchise that began with video games, moved into movies. There were some, some books. Books. There were comics. Um, the, there were action so, figures. There were some bad CGI movies. There was not good. There was a short movie thing. There's uh, that, there's T-shirts, I guess. I made a bandolier. She, she made a bandolier. Evil is a series of horror survival video games and movies that has spawned a media franchise over the last 20 years. The Resident Evil games have been released on the PlayStation systems, for GameCube, for Windows, for Wii and Xbox. There's even been some portable releases. So far, there have been over 20 Resident Evil games. This year is a huge year for the Resident Evil franchise with three game releases and a movie. The formula for the games is generally that you are some incarnation of a government operative and you're sent on a mission. It's usually a rescue mission or get information. Wherever you're sent, it's completely deserted, but it's also infested with people who've been infected by some kind of bacteria or virus or general biohazardous death material that's turned them into somewhat sentient and incredibly violent zombie-like creatures. As the game progresses, you find out information about the Umbrella Corporation and their darkly mysterious involvement with the virus that has been unleashed. The combination puzzle game, RPG, and first person shooter, you must strategically shoot your way through the levels and survive a number of grossly freakish attacks to save the day. Like we said, there have been over 20 Resident Evil games, and some of our favorites include... Resident Evil games 1, 2, and 3. They're awesome in that cheesy way. They use horror cliches to really enhance your experience, and they improve upon each other in graphics, in gameplay, and an overall experience. Also, Resident Evil 4 for the Wii. It's been generally praised for its really good use of the Wii features. I've played it on Wii. It's really cool. Um, it's really immersive, and it will give you the creeps. Some bad games uh, that generally kind of annoyed us include Resident Evil Survivor, which was panned by critics, not just us. Uh, most people consider it the worst game in the Resident Evil franchise. Resident Evil Outbreak was pretty unoriginal. The support for the online play was extremely limited for some reason, uh, and it's kind of tired and unimaginative. You shoot things, they die. Eh. Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City was released in March. It's a non-canon game for some reason. It's a pretty fairly lackluster shooter as well. Um, it, if you've seen the trailer for the game, you've pretty much played the game. So just do that and call it a day. Resident Evil 6 was recently released and seems to be very polarizing. Some people love it, some people hate it. Let us know what you think in the comments below. The first game was originally called Biohazard in Japan. However, it was decided to change the name in North America and Europe after it was pointed out that it would be impossible to trademark Biohazard in the United States. In 2002, the Resident Evil franchise crossed into the world of film with the first Resident Evil movie, in which the Umbrella Corporation owns a genetics lab called The Hive in Raccoon City, and there's an outbreak of the T-Virus. Our protagonist, Alice, is an amnesiac who is guided by a team of commandos and was guarding The Hive. The artificial intelligence of the facility causes everything to lock down and releases a nerve gas that caused Alice's amnesia. After Alice and the team override the facility's AI, it causes all of the doors to unlock and open, releasing humans and other animals infected with the T-Virus, effectively zombifying them. Most of the movie is just a long, drawn-out zombie fight while our main team tries to find the antidote to the T-Virus. A few of them make it out alive and non-zombified, only to be captured by an Umbrella Corporation team. Alice has her memory wiped, and the movie closes with her finding an abandoned Raccoon City, the T-Virus having spread to the general public. In 2004's Resident Evil Apocalypse, we learn that after Alice was captured at the end of the first movie, the Umbrella Corporation experimented on her, giving her super strength, super speed, and super agility. She grabs a shotgun and runs off into the night, gunning down mutant zombies. Eventually, she and a ragtag team of survivors meet the creator of the T-Virus. He created it with good intentions to help his daughter walk again. They're on a mission to save his daughter, Angela. We also learn that Alice has been injected with the T-Virus, but is showing no zombie symptoms. For more information on zombies, symptoms see our GCC on zombies. Hey. Throughout the movie, Alice is fighting the Umbrella Corporation's cleanup program, a gigantic, mutated, intelligent monster. By the way, Umbrella Corp is also planning on nuking the city to rid of the T-Virus. As Alice and her raggedy group catch a helicopter out of Raccoon City, it's hit with one of the shockwaves from Umbrella's nuclear missiles downing the chopper. Alice is found in the wreckage, burned and near death. She wakes up several weeks later in the hospital and recognizes her doctor as the man who was experimenting on her at the end of the previous movie. She fights her way out, is saved by Angela and the group of people she rescued, and makes a getaway. The doctor tells the security to let them go as 
Project Alice has been activated. 2007's Resident Evil Extinction takes place five years after the previous movie. The T-Virus has spread around the world, making most of it a barren, zombified wasteland. Alice is on the run from the Umbrella Corporation as her body combined with the T-Virus and she is the key to making an antidote. The Umbrella Corporation is playing with the clones of Alice trying to make a cure, but they're not really successful. Alice is on her own, but shows up to save her old crew from the previous movie using her telekinetic powers which apparently she has now, and tells them about a diary she found claiming there was a safe, uninfected zone in Alaska. They decide to stop in Vegas to look for supplies on the way to Alaska because that makes a lot of sense. The Umbrella Corporation tracks Alice by her psychic powers, which is a thing they can do. Yep. While their scientists start to go all mad scientisty and create super zombies that kind of go crazy. Alice and her friends attract the Umbrella Corporation to find their underground lair because Umbrella's evil and of course they have an underground lair, <laughs> why wouldn't you? After a lot of death and fighting, Alice makes her way into the lab slash lair, sees a clone of herself uh, who dies, and then she fights this gigantic zombie creature man thing like you do. Her clone saves her life because she is suddenly not dead and not in the undead zombie way, just is no longer dead. Generally alive. Uh, the AI in the lab tells Alice that her blood holds the key to the antidote, so the AI kind of shuts everything down and lets Alice work on an antidote. We learn that the headquarters for Umbrella have moved to Tokyo since the US headquarters have been destroyed. A hologram of Alice pops up in Tokyo and tells Umbrella that she's coming for them, presumably with her big clone army. In 2010's Resident Evil Afterlife, Alice arrives in Tokyo and attacks Dr. Wesker, the crazy mad scientist guy. Anyway, Wesker kills all of Alice's clones, evening the odds, and removes all of her special powers using a serum. Uh, but he, then he seems to die in a plane crash, so whatever. Uh, Alice survives and makes her way back to the US after hearing an emergency signal from a safe haven known as Arcadia. She finds a band of survivors living in a jail just out of reach of the zombies and most, well, some of them make it out alive and get to a boat named Arcadia where there used to be survivors, but now is, there's the previously presumed dead Dr. Wesker. Long story short, Alice kills Dr. Wesker and the movie ends with an Umbrella Corporation squadron coming after them. 2012's Resident Evil Retribution is where the franchise pretty much loses all sense of logic and direction. Uh, it picks up right where Afterlife left off, with Alice knocked unconscious during a battle with Umbrella, and she's taken to their underwater lair, we swear. Uh, that's a real thing, uh, where she's in an induced alter reality slash hallucination thing. She fights zombies in a simulation, she fights them in the real world, and then we find out that the AI from the first movie has taken over Umbrella and is intent on killing Alice, even though Two movies ago, she decided to shut everything down and said, hey, Alice. They end up uh, in the White House in a zombie-infested Washington, D.C., ready to make a last stand for humanity. In 2002's Resident Evil movie, Mila Jovovich's character's name, Alice, is only revealed during the credits. Movie homework. Watch Resident Evil, the original, because it's the original. Just watch it. Resident Evil Afterlife is not particularly original, but they get really good mileage out of their sets and their locations and even, even won a People's Choice Award for Favorite Horror Movie. You can definitely avoid Resident Evil Apocalypse and Resident Evil Retribution because they feel like an apocalyptic retribution against the audience. No good. Your mileage may vary on Resident Evil Extinction. It's not as good as the first movie, but it's a lot better than the second movie. Mm. The original Resident Evil game was put into the Guinness World Records Gamers Edition 2008 for the worst game dialogue ever. Do you prefer the Resident Evil movies or video games? Let us know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe above for future episodes. If you have any questions, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and our website, geekcrashcourse.com. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next week on, on Geek Crash Geek Course. Course. You know the reason he was he... also in the West Wing. That and he was mind. the best! Oh, he was so good. Anyway. Cool. He was mustached like a pro, Holy too. Holy shit, that mustache. That mustache is just the most formidable mustache. Formidable mustache is my new band name. Formidable. <laughs>